for five minutes. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. I appreciate it. Uh, and thank you for being here today. Earlier today, apparently just in time for this hearing, uh, Chairman Pallone issued the following statement. Quote, I am deeply disturbed and disappointed by the Supreme Court's decision today, which sets the dangerous precedent of allowing interstate pipelines to take state-owned land without a state's consent, period, new sentence. States like New Jersey should be able to retain their right to do what they wish with the lands they own, and no private actor, including pipeline companies, should be able to usurp that right. I am determined to work with my colleagues to do everything in our power to preserve this important state right. Let me reiterate, now using my slight modification uh, of his to say that, that he has said that states like New Jersey should be able to retain their right to do whatever they wish with the lands they own, and no private actor should be able to usurp, usurp that right. Does DOE agree with Chairman Pallone on this issue? So, Congressman, thank you very much for the question. The siting of pipelines is not under uh, my jurisdiction or the Department of Energy's jurisdiction. Siting is generally in the responsibility of the states as states look at technology, I mean, as infrastructure investments. All right, how about the electric uh, transmission? No private actor, it says, should be able to have this right. Do you agree that, that the no private actor, including electric transmission lines, should be able to use eminent domain to take the state's property? So with respect to transmission, transmission is siting is under the jurisdiction of the state and under FERC. And so once again, with respect to building transmission in the United States, it is a collaborative process looking at the state's uh, needs and the state's uh, capability from a siting point of view. The Department of Energy focuses on the permitting aspects of transmission and planning. Part of our technical assistance would be to support states in evaluating transmission and But some of the bills that we're working on would change the rules on that. Am I not correct? Uh, I would say that under the Clean Futures Act, there is uh, some, there is modifications in the Clean F Future Acts that are focused on FERC and FERC's authorities. And, and, and I would have to agree that FERC needs some reform. Uh, earlier, if I understood you correctly, and correct me if I misunderstood, you indicated that one of the ways we might be able to build this huge uh, amount of uh, high voltage electric transmission that we're going to need would be to, uh, use existing uh, rights of way, such as highways, existing electric lines, and Amtrak. Was I correct in hearing you? Yes, Congressman. Okay. That is so, so here's the question I would have on that. Um, without some significant reform at FERC, we're not going to be able to co-locate because I tried to suggest to them they look at uh, two pipelines that were being run through Virginia, and they said they didn't have that authority to co-locate. Now, let me go one step further, and, and I'm not going to ask you a question on that. I'm just stating they, they claim they don't have that authority, so we may have to do, give them that authority. But then if you're doing it on, let's say, Amtrak, Amtrak doesn't own a very wide easement in most of its lines, and in many cases it runs on private rail lines. Isn't that true? Uh, so I'm not as familiar with the structure The answer is yes, Amtrak. it is. All right. Okay. <laughs> so, but for an electric power transmission line, particularly a high-voltage one, you would need at least, what, 150 to 300 feet? So Amtrak's not going to work. How about our interstate highways? Are they going to be 300 feet wide in most places? I guess the interstates would work, but not U.S. highway corridors or highways because they the corridor's big, but the easement's not. And I would be correct on that, would I not? Yes, you would be correct, Congress. So that's not going to work. If we can't take state property and we can't locate, so the only thing we've got left is locating where there's already a high-voltage transmission line on those items we were talking about earlier, how do you envision that? Would we have double-decker lines, ones that's much higher than the others? Uh, how are you going to put two high-voltage power lines in the same easement? So thank you, Congressman. I think this is really part of the planning process in discussion with states as well as Department of Transportation. So right now you don't know is the answer. You don't know how you're going to work that. It would be a transmission planning process that would have to be evaluated and individually with projects. So here's my concern. 
we're talking about uh, 2030 having 50 percent uh, or reducing emissions by, by 2030 by 50 percent and 100 percent by 2050. But by the time we get through the planning process, we get through all the litigation, we comply with all the regulations. One of our previous witnesses said it was likely to take more than 30 years. Can't be done. Let's quit selling the American people uh, a false promise. I yield back. The gentleman yields back. 